So you want to make what now? A birthday present for you. A birthday present for me. What are you going to make? Mm, how about charcuterie boards? I love charcuterie boards. How about two? Two. How about these? <gasps> Let's make them. And with that, we're off to the hardware store. I can't believe you took three kids to the hardware store. It was ridiculous, but we picked out some lumber and practiced proper posture. We went back, we're going to pick out Paduke and Oak and started designing because we didn't know what we wanted to actually make it look like. <laughs> look at your cartoon. So we decided on chevrons, which means we had to cut out a couple different blocks first. I do love a nice chevron pattern. I thought you would. Next, we just started cleaning up the wood and slicing up different pieces into different lengths. Well, there you go. You are getting very good at cutting these tiny, tiny strips, Jonathan. As long as I keep my fingers attached. To get ready for the chevrons, I cut a couple of different scrap pieces. You'll see where these come in in the future. I cut the paduke and the oak into these three quarter inch wide, six inch long pieces that are going to get stacked together. As I started thinking about how do I actually glue all of these pieces into a diagonal pattern to get the chevrons to look, I realized you can't clamp diagonally. They'll slide over one of each other and you can't push them all as one big block or they'll twist. So I needed to make a jig that was going to hold everything in place in a diagonal. So I cut two triangles and then I framed those inside of the clamps with some scrap pieces of poplar. That let me glue up each block along a 45 degree angle and then when the clamping pressure is applied, each piece gets pushed against each other along the line that it's glued, but they won't slide and they won't twist. And then to really lock them in, I use some scrap pieces of poplar that pushes them against the triangle. And thus allowing for a super tight glue up. Ingenious, Jonathan. I love these new clamps. These are your parallel clamps. They are expensive. Mm -hmm. Did you felt like it was worth it though? Uh, well, did you feel like you liked the boards at the end of it? Yeah, they're stunning. Then yes, it was totally worth it. So then we used on a flattening jig, I cleaned up one edge here. And having a really nice straight edge, I can clean up the other side. And then very carefully measuring, I had to cut exactly in the middle here. And this is the fun part. You flip one oh, half around yeah. and you've got chevrons. Well, and if you didn't, it's a candy cane. Then like a total bozo, I didn't press play when we glued it up. Missed opportunity. But at the end, we had a bunch of extra stuff. So I thought I'd make you another board. I always like two things. Why not have more two if you can more have more stuff? And here we have a lovely gluing up montage. Yeah, but these clamps are crap. Not good for the job. Maybe for the garbage. <laughs> Coming out of the clamps, we went ahead and just cleaned up the boards a little bit. And it was time for the planer. Ooh, the planer. You know, without dust collection, I feel like I'm getting the black lung though. Maybe the wood lung. So here I've got a simple paper template to figure out where I want to cut. This is wonderfully simplistic, but it just works so well. Paper and pencil, that's paper all it takes. Mm -hmm. With the board roughly cut out into its shape, I took it over to the belt sander to clean it up. So why not the spindle sander here? I like to be unpredictable. <laughs> I think it gives cleaner lines than the spindle sander. And then our favorite part with an eighth inch roundover bit. I do like this wonderful round over footage. It keeps it nice and clean. It does. And a little bit shiny. It's a simple tool, but I think the effect it has is really amazing. Yeah. Ah, oh, look at you sanding again. Going all through all the grits. This time all the way down to 80, 120, 220, and then 320 with a random orbital sander. And then it was time to break out some hand sanding, which I know seems a little bit overkill, but when you go all the way up to 2000 grit, it really makes a difference. Well, they even, you know, we showed them when they clank together, they almost sound glass-like. It's it, amazing. It definitely changes the way it feels. It does. Here you can see sanding at 320 grit right after the random orbital sander. Which is so nice. Look how smooth. And here's the 2000 grit. Like you can just see that sheen. It's undeniable. It's super glossy. Ooh, my favorite part, my favorite part. Time to finish. And this time we used a mixture of mineral oil, beeswax, and carnauba wax. Liked it so much better. What is carnauba wax? Carnauba wax is known as the queen of waxes. This is all coming from Wikipedia. It is made from the carnauba palm plant and is only grown in the northeastern provinces of Brazil. Carnauba. Carnauba.
So here is our new finish, getting smoothed on and looking all kinds of fantastic. So rich and buttery, like rubbing it down with Crisco. We've not tried Crisco. Mm, how do you want to spend your Saturday nights? Were you just smelling the board? I was. <laughs> Thank you so much. I, I, these are beautiful. They're really beautiful. Thank you for my present. Babe. Good, I love you. They were hard to make. They were a little hard to make, but look at the result. It's unbelievable. And happy birthday. Thank you. And they smell good. Carnupa does smell good. Yeah. Enjoy. Thanks. Do all the things. Please like, subscribe, watch, tell your friends, make your own charcuterie board. It's worth it.